detailing in the summer is no joke. All my mobile detailers, you know how hard it is. Lut, sweat, and tears have to be put to make those vehicles look better than new. So I wanted to make this video to show you 10 tips you can use to be more efficient and help you stay cool and hydrated during the summer when detailing cars outside. Some of y'all are detailing in degrees close to 100 or over 100 degrees, so it's crazy. Here in San Diego, where it's great weather most of the time, it still gets really hot. So I can only imagine for some of you in Arizona or Texas, we're going in degrees over 100, even some parts of California as well. So, so the first tip, actually you're looking at it, it's a long sleeve shirt. A long sleeve shirt will really help you. First of all, you're not gonna get the farmer's tan, right? You're not gonna get mismatched color shades in your skin. But second of all, it's protecting you from the sun. Now, not all long sleeve shirts are the same. You wanna get a long sleeve shirt that has UPF protection or UV protection. So this one right here actually has UPF rating of 50. And so it's one of the higher grades, which is really well. So you wanna get something that at least has minimum UPF 30, UPF 50 is better. There's some even out there nowadays, UPF 80. So you, not just a long sleeve, but a long sleeve that has UPF protection, UV protection. This will actually help you stay cooler during your detailing. So the second tip is to use a hat. Obviously you're seeing me wearing a hat. Now this hat, this is not the best type of hat you wanna use. You wanna use a proper sun hat. So you wanna use a hat like this that actually covers a lot of your head, the brim of your face here. And also the hat you wanna use, you should want one that has this uh, back part right here. It covers your neck. So this is really helpful. A lot of the times the sun is beating down on your neck. So this is really a lifesaver right here. And these hats also have UPF or UV protection. So you wanna get a hat like this again that covers not just your head, but also your neck. That's very important. Okay, so the next two tips are the ones that I'm most excited about that maybe you haven't heard about. I recently found out about them. They have totally changed the game for me. They have dramatically improved my performance in the heat. So the first one is this neck fan. So these fan, this is actually, it looks like headphones but actually it's a fan. So as you can see here, it has all these slits or slots and so air comes out of it. So you put it over your neck and you're getting constant blowing of air. These things are amazing. So you put your, your hat on and then you put this on and it feels like there's always constant breeze blowing on your face which makes you feel and stay cool. Again, this is a game changer. These ones are actually not that expensive at all. They're about $27 on Amazon. And I'm gonna obviously have a link to the description to everything you see here in case you're interested. But these ones you can find in various places. They're becoming more common. They have three different, three different speeds. The first speed lasts about 12 hours, I believe. The second speed, about nine hours. And then the third speed, about four hours. So I keep it in the second speed because I want it to last longer and it's good enough for me. So it has a, the button here, you just turn it on and I'm gonna see if you can hear it through the microphone. That's speed one. This is speed two right here, speed two, and then speed three. So again, this is what it looks like. So the fan is right here, the fan is right here, and then the air is coming out of these slots right here. So yeah, this neck fan is life-changing, and I highly suggest everyone to check it out and try it out. And the next one is these things that go over your head. Now what's cool about these things is that they really help you stay cool. So the way it works is you get them wet, so you, you get them wet, And then you wring it out. And then moist, you put them over your head. And this is gonna help you stay cool uh, for a couple hours. So the colder the water, obviously the better. Uh, they go right over your, your face and neck. There's different ones. Uh, I like this one that goes over your shoulders as well, kind of like this and you can kind of put it under your shirt, kind of hide it, but as you can see, it covers my face. You put your sun hat, the other one, not this one, but I'm just, for sake of purposes, you put it on. It covers your neck, covers your ears, covers part of your face. So this really helps you stay a couple degrees cooler and because it's nice and moist. So this is a really good tool to use 
when detailing in the summer. Now I know what some of you guys are gonna say, oh, you look funny or I don't wanna look funny. The thing is, it's not about how you look necessarily. The point is to stay cool, stay hydrated, um, not have a heat stroke. Heat strokes are a real thing, guys. It's not a joke. So it makes your job easier and more enjoyable. You're not sweaty and perspirating and stuff like that. So uh, at the end of the day, it's about being more efficient and being uh, more comfortable when doing your job when detailing. The next tip, as you can see, is getting a canopy. A canopy is super helpful, super beneficial. It really helps you out. As you know, every detailing chemical doesn't work well when the panels are really hot or when they're, it's in the sun. So even if you read the labels, pretty much all of them will tell you, use it in a shaded area. Don't use it in direct sunlight. But unfortunately, we mobile detailers usually don't have that option. So what's one thing you can do to change that is you can get a canopy. The canopy makes the panels stay cooler and away from the sun. So it really changes your detailing process. So these are the canopies that I've used that have really helped me out. This canopy is 10 by 10 and I've also owned a 10 by 20. I prefer the 10 by 20 because you can cover even large trucks like a Raptor or a TRX for the most part. But the 10 by 10 is simpler to set up and it's more versatile. So sometimes you don't have that much space. You don't have enough space to set up a 10 by 20. So a 10 by 10 really helps out. Now I have two of them. So in case I do want to do a large vehicle, I can set up both of them. These 10 by 10 are very easy to set up with one person. You basically open it up and then you push the lever to click at the top. And then you just pull these legs here and you just do it one by one. You do this one and then you do this one and then so on and so forth until you do the four of them. It also has three different heights. So this is the first height, second height, and then third height. And you do the same thing for all three legs. The third height pretty much covers all lifted vehicles for the most part, like naturally lifted, like I said, like a Raptor or a TRX. The third height is perfect for it. For any regular vehicle, first height is perfect. Now, the only thing about this is obviously you need to have the space in your van to be able to fit these. So that's one thing to consider. Now, the only thing I would say to help you out is some of the pieces they end up getting loose and then the screws get uh, separated and then they start kind of breaking down, I guess you can say. So I do recommend that every so often you tighten up all the screws so it doesn't come loose, it doesn't break off and then it doesn't make it difficult for you. Now, when using the canopies, there is one thing you need to be very, very, very careful about, especially if you live in an area where there's high winds, the canopies can fly off. And if they fly off, they most likely will damage your customer's vehicle. So it's something that you have to make sure. Unfortunately, I put my tent away when it's not summer. So I recently brought it out and I need to find the weights. But basically you need to find, you need to buy these weights. Basically you put it at the bottom here of the leg and it helps it as leverage so it doesn't fly off. And you put a weight on all of the four corners. So you have to make sure that you put those weights so you don't damage or the canopy doesn't fly off. So it's something very important. Okay, so the next tip is to work on whatever side of the car the shade is at. So depending on where the sun is, depending on the time of the day that it is. So for example, if this side of the car is where the sun was hitting, then I wanna work and start on the other side, which is this side. Because this side, there will be shade. And the cooler the panels are, the better your chemicals will work. The less streaking there will be, the less difficulty there will be for you. So again, Wherever the shade is, according to the time of the day, you wanna work on that side and that panel first. The other thing with that is, instead of perhaps foaming up the whole car or doing something to the whole car, when it's really hot outside and the panels are really hot, especially on black cars, you wanna work panel for panel. So let's say I'll foam this panel, and then I'll wash it, and then I'll rinse it off, which you have to have deionized water or uh, demineralize water for that obviously so you don't leave water spots but basically i would work on this panel perhaps even dry it off if you're using a rinseless method like a rinseless wash wash this panel dry it off and then move on to the next panel so on and so forth so work on the side that there's shade first even for example the wheels if this is where the shaded area was and the sun was on that side that i want to start on this side because again the chemicals will not streak or dry off which can basically stain some surfaces or wheels. So you wanna work on a side that is shaded and work panel per panel. Another tip is depending on what time of the day it is, start on the, on the thing that's gonna be easier. So for example, if it's early in the morning, that's probably the best time to wash the exterior of the car. But let's say if it's really hot at 12 to three, when it's the hottest, 
then you probably want to start with the interior of the car and by the time you're done with the interior there will be less sunlight so that way you can work on the exterior and your chemicals will work better and there will be less you know hot sun that's beating down on you so work on the on the interior exterior depending on the time of the day that it is so the next tip is to use a sunshade. So you wanna buy a sunshade, they're really cheap. You can get them at Costco. I'll also link them in the description. And a sunshade, you wanna put it on the car that you're working on when working on the interior. And the reason that is, is because the sunshade is gonna repel the UV rays and make the temperature inside the car cooler. That way you're able to work without having the sun constantly beating down on your face. So that way also when you clean the dashboard, let's say the chemical is not flashing because of the sunlight and you can just, you know, continue your cleaning when working on the interior and the sun is not beating down on you. And then the other one is use your customer's AC, you know, no customer will mind. And if your customer minds, if you use their AC, then that's really not the type of customer you want to be working with. I've never had any customer had any issue with it. Obviously you don't want to go all out or all crazy, but definitely turn it on from time to time or you know, keep it running for a while. This is gonna help you stay cooler. So use the AC, use the sunshade to keep the temperature inside the car when working on the interior cooler, and that way you have a more successful detailing experience. And the last tip should be obvious, but I just wanna re-mention, stay hydrated, guys. Heat strokes are a real thing, like I mentioned, and they're no joke at all. So you wanna always stay hydrated. Now, water is obviously great, but water is not the most hydrating thing. You want to use something that has electrolytes. For example, coconut water. Coconut water has magnesium, potassium, and different electrolytes that actually replenish your electrolytes. That way you do stay hydrated. Also, they sell these little packets that have a little bit of flavor in it, and you just put it inside your water bottle, and then you mix it, and this is not just water anymore, but it's water with electrolytes. Now, don't get deceived. Gatorade does not have actual good electrolytes that work. Even Gatorade Zero doesn't have good enough electrolytes. It's just pure sugar. So stay away from anything that's too sugar. I know you gotta drink your energy drink. I do too as well, but on top of your coffee, on top of your energy drink, you wanna stay hydrated with electrolytes and minerals. For example, coffee is diuretic, so it naturally dehydrates you. So you wanna replenish using electrolytes, using minerals. So even though you drink your coffee, your energy drink, replenish yourself with plenty of fluids that have electrolytes and minerals. And then the last one is kind of a bonus, but if you have a big van like mine, use your van as a form of shade. It kind of depends on the time of day that it is as well. But let's say if you had the option to, if let's say there's shade on this side, then you wanna park the car on this side, that way your van is acting as a shield and a shade. If, they're, if the sun's coming from that direction, from your direction over here, then you wanna park your van there and then work on the car here because it will provide that shade for you. So use your van for that. I hope these tips and tools really help you out. But what about you? How do you beat the summer heat? How do you detail in the summer? Let me know. Put your comments and thoughts in the comment section and I wanna hear from you so we can learn from each other. And please stay tuned and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you so much.